Thank you so thank much, you guys. Any thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Susan Rice is extraordinary. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't be prouder of the job that she's done at USU. Bloomberg View, Eli Lake from CircaNews.com, Sarah Carter. Eli, let's start with you. Welcome to the program. Uh, all right, so incidental surveillance this is what Devin Nunes was talking about. Okay, but what bothered him? Now we find out Susan Rice seemingly is purposely unmasking the names of people, but only Trump transition team's member or maybe even then candidate Trump what those conversations were if they were picked up, quote, incidentally. How, why is that dangerous, and why should the American people understand the seriousness of this? Well, I, I want to just stress that I don't know other things that she requested to be unmasked, but the way I understand this is that the National Security Council staffer who was brought in for Trump, who was doing a review of the unmasking policy, noticed an anomaly in the patterns of requests from Susan Rice to unmask the names that were incidentally collected in summaries of basically raw intelligence of monitored communications. That was then discovered by the staffer uh, whose name has been out there. He then takes that to the general counsel's office in the White House, who then look into this some more and have tried to make this available to first Devin Nunes, the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, but also Adam Schiff, the ranking member of that committee, and they've offer, also offered this to the Senate Intelligence Committee. All right, and Sarah, so why would Susan right. Rice, as it, especially as it relates to everything that we have been talking about, take incidental surveillance and ask, this is raw intelligence, ask for the unmasking, but only seemingly in the case of the Trump transition team or perhaps even Trump as a candidate. How dangerous is that when the White House, an administration, a sitting administration, is surveilling and using legitimate surveillance to basically surveil on an opposition party? Uh, Sean, it's extremely concerning because I think those are the questions that need to be asked directly of Susan Rice. I attempted to reach out to her a number of times just to ask her those exact same questions, but she did not return my phone calls. Shocking. But what I, I, want to I want to step back because what we're looking at is not just the expansion. Remember last week, Sean, you and I discussed this. 702, Section 702 of the 12333 Executive Order is supposed to protect Americans from being unmasked. But if we go back to the stories that we wrote last week, in 2011, that was expanded. The FISA court signed off under the Obama administration to allow for more leniency and unmasking. So it wasn't like, it, it's almost as if it was legalized without us knowing it. And so the unmasking was allowed to occur. So in 2011, then in 2015, they relaxed the laws even more. So what they were able to do is, and we know, we know it went to Susan Rice, we know uh, uh, former uh, CIA Clapper, director Brennan. John Brennan was allowed to do this in Clapper. So they had the ability to request unmasked, unmasked American intercepts, raw intelligence, to foreign, that, raw intelligence, that highly should never classified. Have, even if it was legitimate intelligence gathering, they're basically using that as a means to spy on innocent Americans without the benefit of a warrant. Good way to put and it. That's, and that's certainly, yes, and that's certainly what intelligence sources are saying. They're saying, look, this isn't right. just about just the unmasking. It's about why did they specifically unmask Susan Rice in particular at this point from July. The, right, we're going all the way back to July. What could be the logical reason short of they wanted to use legitimate intel intelligence gathering as a ruse to get to the Trump transition team and maybe even candidate Trump if it goes back to July? If it goes back to July, these are the questions they have to ask. And, and according to the sources that I've spoken with, it goes back to July. It happened again in November, and then it happened exponentially after November through January. So they were looking at this. Other sources that we've spoken to just recently, as of today, wow. have said to us, and these are high-level senior intelligence sources, said these questions need to be asked. Now, they could have been looking at it because right. I, I some sources are saying... But okay. I, all right, standard operating procedures is you do not identify 
the identity of an American because you don't have a warrant for that, that surveillance. Standard operating procedures when you're writing up a report, they would usually put in American and identify nobody. But in this specific case, specific cases, we have Susan Rice asking for the names of those people. Is there any indication that any of the unmasking requests of Susan Rice had to do with anything other than the incidental surveillance of Trump, transition members, associates, or is this just ex exclusively on Trump? Do we know, either one of you? Well, I'd say at this point, we still have a lot of unanswered questions, and you know, it would be interesting to find out if we, we'd li I'd like to hear from, I also reached out to Susan Rice, we'd like to hear from her exactly what her rationale was why on would, all of Why this. would we believe her? She and went on five Sunday shows and lied repeatedly about Benghazi. How can you trust her? Well, I still think that we need to, we should give the benefit of the doubt. I mean, we're, we're making some serious accusations here. I'd like to hear her side of it. You're, you're correct that on Benghazi, she gave a story about the internet video. But I would just kind of go back and I'd say that we're, I think, at the beginning of this investigation. And what we may end up finding out is that the law that allows the U.S. government to collect all this information and share it within the government needs to seriously be reformed because it may turn out that all of what Susan Rice did was technically legal but improper, if you will. And in that case, I think it would be a matter of reform. And I would just say this. I'm surprised that more Democrats and progressives have not taken this issue more seriously because if Barack Obama can do this to the Trump transition, then surely Donald Trump can do this to his own opposition, and that's something well, that ought to worry all Americans. It, but it goes even deeper, Sarah, because right. her unmasking set the stage, if you will, for the leaking that took place. We know a felony was committed in the case of Lieutenant General Michael Flynn. So, you know, why would they want to know all of these things? And maybe this was the whole false narrative thing that Evelyn Farkas was talking about that a lot of people might have now known. Yes, and I think we need those answers. I agree with Eli wholeheartedly on this. This is a civil liberties issue. It's huge. It deals with the Fourth it's also Amendment. It's spying. Yeah, it's unreasonable and, and search and seizure. Exactly. And I think that there's something else, you know, a number of sources that I've spoken to about this and, you know, none of us have access to those transcripts. Those are highly classified. But what we do know is what they've told us. They have nothing to do with Russia, apparently, and apparently there was no foreign intelligence value, according to people wow. who have had access to this. So then they have to ask that question, and they have to answer those questions, right? Why were they looking at these transcripts? Now, listen, you know what you're describing? You're describing it maybe if they technically sh shifted the law without anybody paying attention. They seem to be using, under the guise of national security and legitimate surveillance, an opportunity to do something worse than Watergate, which is to spy on a presidential candidate, opposition party, and an incoming president, a president-elect, and his transition team. That's what it looks like to me. Does that look that way to you, Sarah? Yeah, I think that they need to ask those questions. I think the House Intelligence Committee, the Senate Intelligence Committee, and certainly in the case of the leaking of Michael Flynn's name, there needs to yeah. be a full investigation where people can be subpoenaed and a grand jury can be and called. The Russia, and Russia it had nothing to do with it, and now we learn that this whole Russian conspiracy is a lie. True or false? We don't know everything yet, Sean. But what we do know is as soon as we keep peeling this layer of this onion back, we'll get more and more answers. We know there's and the no American evidence. People. We know there's yes, no evidence we, of any collusion. Yeah, we know. Well, yeah. we definitely know that the only evidence out there is that someone leaked uh, very classified uh, information and some, an American name regarding a classified transcript. And that was the law that was broken.